we've already talked about confidence confidence intervals as one method for taking sample data and drawing conclusions about our population. Now we're introducing hypothesis testing, which in a different way achieves the same goal or a similar goal. So why do we need another method for inferential statistics? So we wanna talk a little bit about the difference between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. Um, what one type, one method, what sort of results one method leads to versus the results the other leads to. So confidence intervals, while we can use them to draw conclusions and answer questions about population parameters, what they really tell us about is how good our estimate is. So for instance, in example three, to better understand how students perform in a stats class, a researcher collected data on the final grades of 5,000 students. Of the students studied, 86% received a passing grade. So in this case, if we constructed a 95% confidence interval, that would range from 0 0.85 to 0 0.8694. So that's a relatively small range. We're 95% confident that the actual population proportion is captured in that interval, somewhere between a little over 85% and a little under 87%. So we have a very small range of likely values due to that very large sample size. In example four, we have essentially the same question, but this time only 50 students Data was only collected on 50 students. So in this case, our 95% confidence interval estimate would be 0 0.7264 to 0 0.9372. So in this case, we have a much wider range. In the first example, it looks like that average is around an 85 to 87%. So a pretty narrow range to look at. Here it could be anywhere as low as a little over 72% up to almost 94%. So that's a span of three different letter grades. So we have a much wider range as a result of that much smaller sample size. So one of the things that confidence intervals really do is let us see how good our estimate is. It's gonna be much better if we can draw a conclusion with an interval like this versus an interval with such a wide range. So what hypothesis tests are gonna do are going to allow us to um, relate to, um, hypothesis tests relate to a single conclusion about statistical significance. Meaning, is our data, do we have enough information to say that our sample result is statistically significant, statistically significantly different from the assumed population parameter or that assumed statement in the null hypothesis. And it's gonna to lead to a decision. We either maintain the original assumption, assumption of the null hypothesis or we reject it, leaving us with the alternative hypothesis as our alternative conclusion. Confidence intervals serve a different function. They provide a plausible range of values for the population. Now there is some definite relationship between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, and that comes with our value for alpha and our confidence level. So one minus alpha, which is our significance level, happens to be exactly our confidence level. So that means that if our alpha value is 0 0.05, that would mean the same thing as having a confidence level of 95%. Or if our alpha value is 0 0.01, that would relate to the idea of having 99% confidence in our results. So there are relationships between the two with our confidence level and our significance level. Both methods are having us draw conclusions about the population using sample data. Um, depending on 
whose opinion you're taking. Different people will argue advantages of hypothesis testing versus confidence intervals. But the real difference we're going to look at is this idea of coming to a single conclusion based around statistical significance versus generating this range of plausible values. That idea of letting us know how good our estimate is.